Um, this argument is quite uh, tricky, it's quite complicated, uh, and uh, I decided to give you some more some information about uh, the uh, possibilities in this field. So, uh, modifying the genome of, of, uh, of uh, animals, in particular of mammalian mouse field, uh, where I'm working, is quite complicated and uh, under a strict regulation, so not only in Europe, but even in other countries. Um, the title is quite uh, simplificative, is uh, mammalian gene editing is a tool to unravel the genome function and cure human diseases. So, um, uh, in this short presentation, I'll try to give you some information about uh, the international projects where I'm involved uh, and collaborations. Uh, we are, uh, then we are going to talk about gene editing. Uh, that has been really exploited this morning. And then we are going to uh, briefly review some, some uh, example of uh, uh, gene editing and uh, precision medicine, medicine and diseases modeling. And we have some information even about the innovations and dissemination of knowledge. Of course, one of the most Im very important thing, issue that uh, we, we faced uh, almost every day is the uh, impact of uh, um, uh, population and the government and journalists and so on. Uh, I appreciate a lot of talk of the communication this morning. Maybe there will be time in the following days to talk about because uh, in our field it is really, really important. And uh, I can tell you more because uh, uh, now the prob probably there was a, um, a retraction of a scientific community that, is, uh, that was uh, as in a tower, talking about the, the people and the population. Now the scientists try to communicate much better and they get the information more clear for individuals, for communities, even because modifying the genome of animals is not uh, so uh, unimportant, as not know to say. So it's very sensitive in terms of populations and sometimes you have to be able to communicate much more and much better to the to the people especially with the youngers so we are uh, we are running courses and uh, seminars even the high schools in the elementary schools try to sensi sensibilize youngers in these terms and try to let grow up a new population of people much more closer to the scientists, the scientific community, and conclusions, of course. So why the mouse? <laughs> uh, the mouse is uh, the, the key model for, the, for modeling the human diseases. And this is an example of the uh, mutation of the CKIT gene, to, to which is associated a uh, known syndrome that is called Pibaldism. The Pibaldism is the rare autosomal disease that is uh, uh, features by uh, with the uh, white spot and with the scattered uh, pigmented and uh, hypopigmented zones in the fur and the skin and uh, even uh, um, a, a white forelock is uh, one of the example of course this syndrome is not uh, like this it's not so simple but it's associated even the, uh, with some metabolic uh, uh, alterations and as you can see, the mouse uh, symptoms, let's say, and, and, the, and the human symptoms are quite similar. Take into account that more than 98% of genome and the gene expression is, represent, is in common between uh, the mouse and the human. So, um, among, between uh, the 22,500 mouse protein coding genes, and uh, in, 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 uh, in the mus musculus and the 20,500 uh, human protein genes uh, in the humans, uh, in the men, uh, 17,000 of these genes are functionally related. This is uh, extraordinary. And uh, many symptoms uh, and uh, many uh, conditions of disease can be eas relatively easily replicated in mice. The consequence is, is, the, is, the, is the following. The mouse is the preferred model organism for scientific research. It's studying of more than 120 years, is uh, very well known, and has some features that is very, uh, led the mouse to be the key preferred organism for the mouse diseases for modeling. Um, since the incipit of the Nobel Prize uh, assignations, uh, 
more than 30 Nobel Prizes in medicine and physiology has been assigned thanks to the mouse studies. Okay, this is very significant. Uh, to which there are many discovered that has been uh, related and uh, very important for the human field and the medicine in, in the last century, of course. So this is the place where I'm working, is a, a scientific campus that is located near the capital, the Rome, Rome, in the northern part. And uh, uh, we have the, unfortunately, we had at that time when we started the, the ICGB uh, site there, then uh, this is not politically correct, I, can, I cannot say this, but uh, unfortunately, we, ICGB decided to leave. Not, not because of me, of course, uh, but it was a, a political and strategic decision, probably for economical reasons. But uh, we are still friends, very closely friends, uh, and uh, we are collaborating, maybe much closer than in the past, where they were there. Uh, we have a lot, uh, we have an um, enormous space of uh, facilities. We are more than 3,000 square meters with uh, high quality standards. Uh, and the new uh, building is this one. It's called Mouse Clinic. That is very improper. Mouse clini Clinic is an hospital where the people are, are coming to cure, to get therapy. And every, in every place in the world, they decide, in, not obviously me, because uh, the, the right name is the Center for Phenogenomics. Okay, because it's a center for phenogenomics. But mouse clinic is more appealing. This is the communication strategy that has applied to this field. And the mouse clinic is the, is the new building, a completely new shape, um, thanks to the efforts of the national government and the uh, founders that are coming from EU. It has been re just realized, it's one of the 18 examples in the world, and seven examples in, uh, in Europe. It's very, we are keen to use it. Not so far away, but probably we're going to inaugurate next year. Uh, we have a very beautiful infrastructure for, for progressing in studies of human diseases. So we have a, a very broad pattern of uh, international collaborations, uh, with, especially with the MBL, that is the premier and most important uh, institution for scientific research in Europe, in the world. And of course, the CGB is one of the strategic partners in developing uh, projects uh, in this field. We have a beautiful network in two consortia that collect the major centers working in this field in the world. Completely all continents are represented in this pattern. So Infra Frontiers, the, 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 the original network that is called EMMA, European Mouse Mutant Archive, that has been founded in 1995. And then Infra Frontier is the uh, prosecution, the following. And he, co is collecting, uh, he collects uh, 14 European countries plus MBL plus Canada. And it's spread in, uh, in your, all Europe, European countries, uh, uh, where is this work is, uh, has been represented, in, represented and uh, is de developing for human diseases. We are very devoting, uh, ECGB is an example, but for in this field, uh, on the technological development, development on a global scale. And we uh, spent the last 20 years on setting new standards for disease modeling. And we not discover, but setting up new methods uh, with international standards for quality control in mouse researches. We are a reference place in this field and uh, we develop a very new technology in cryo on cryobiology, on databases, on data collecting, data dissemination, and so on. And of course, since we are talking about animals, of course, they are animals, we are refined tests uh, with a minimally non-invasive test and validate quality standards and operation procedures. This improves uh, robustness, reproducibility of results, uh, and all things that are related and correlated between uh, animals and uh, the human field. Thus, uh, this uh, beautiful work uh, um, that has been achieved uh, in the last decades uh, um, produced a, very, uh, a good re uh, very nice result, that is a reduction of animal use, and, uh, according to this, uh, this pattern. This is a list of things that we literally invented and progressed, and uh, just an example. So, take into account when we start in the operations, uh, most of the, um, the lines, the mutant lines, the mouse mutant lines, travel as a 
live animals. Now the majority of lions travels as refrigerated or frozen products, embryos, germplasm. And this is a very nice achievement. We just make some uh, roughly estimation and uh, uh, probably we are in, um, according to these procedures and uh, some even some processes, uh, some process that are not not uh, anymore involving animals, of course. Uh, we uh, can can save uh, applying just these procedures more than 10 millions of animals, uh, reducing the number of animals up to 10 millions per year. The, the same number that is used in Europe. This is, this is, these are some publications that uh, came out uh, recently, relatively recently, and more, much more will come out uh, in the future on the setting up this new technology. So, uh, some information about CNR. CNR is the National Council of Research, uh, so the uh, largest uh, multidisciplinary public research and technology development institution in Italy. And our institute, that is the Institute uh, of uh, um, um, uh, biochemistry, same biology. I can't remind the name because just we just changed the name, and it was uh, I remind the original. We changed the name one month ago uh, by the fusion with the Honor Institute. Runs uh, the uh, the archive, the Infra Frontier, but even the Mouse Clinic Center for Functional Genomics. And we are specialized on uh, gener generation. We have three groups that generate uh, newly made uh, mutant animals, mice, we, and we do, and we are going to do much more primary and specialized phenotyping, cryopreservation distribution of, of mutants worldwide, and uh, as a model of human pathology. And we are even part of the European Strategy Forum of Research Infrastructures, so that is a landmark in this field. S3, is, S3 landmark infrastructures are the major elements of competitiveness in the European research area because it certifies the quality of infrastructures. Infrastructures are not only the building, are building, procedures, staff and, the war, and expertise, of course, that has been achieved previously. And of course, all this work contributes to cost efficiency, reduction of animal use and data reproducibility. So this is the IMPC consortium member consortium uh, whose scope is to systematically phenotype a new knockout mice. And I have a short movie illustrating this kind of stuff. Maria has discovered evidence that a particular gene may contribute to a disease in her research patients. But what does that gene normally do? If it's like most genes, its role is probably not very well understood. Maria researches the gene in the scientific literature and talks to her colleagues about it to find out what they know. As it turns out, very little is known about this gene, but she needs more to go on before she designs her study. Fortunately, Maria can turn to the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium, the IMPC, to find freely available information on what is known about the function of a gene. The IMPC is a global network of leading scientific institutes and is supported by public funding to help make research more efficient. We share 98% of our genes with mice and can learn a lot about the connection between genes and disease by studying mice that have had different genes switched off. With 20,000 genes to study, it's too big a job for one laboratory, so the IMPC coordinates efforts among its members. Switching a gene off gives useful clues about what it actually does in a living system. The IMPC generates knockout mice, in which particular genes are switched off, and gathers a huge amount of information about each mouse, its genome, appearance and health, for example, and makes this information freely available to everyone. This saves scientists valuable time in their research into disease and helps minimize the number of mice used in research. Maria can use IMPC data and mice to investigate what may be happening in patients with a particular disease who may have an important gene switched off. Understanding the function of this gene could help future patient screening and treatment. Learn how the IMPC can help your research at mousephenotype.org. 
So the ontology classification and the information about the genes and uh, where to find out the right uh, mouse model are represented in this, um, in this website, in our website, InfraFrontier website. And all the classification has been realized by a, a specialized group of staff in, in, our, in our team. And uh, um, the major achievement is to correlate uh, disease models to uh, human disease models to genes and to uh, mouse strains. This is a work that has, is, is done uh, uh, regularly every day and uh, it's quite important for scientists and for a group of institutions that are not aware about this and uh, well, they find informations about, uh, they're looking for find inform finding information about this. So the goals of OEMPC are the following. So the first is very impressive because it's the uh, building the first uh, comprehensive functional catalog of mammalian genome by systematically phenotyping 20,000 knockouts, mouse strains for each gene that has been cloned. The database already has uh, 8,000 genes phenotyped and much more will come and uh, the, this great achievement will be completed uh, theoretically in two years. Then all the data are freely available for the community, for scientific community, and of course mutant strains are available to order for everybody in the world. The major achievements at the EMPC level in these two years has been the following. Uh, scientists discover extensive pleiotropy and uh, a sexual dis dis dismorphism that uh, was not predicted before. Uh, of course, uh, even one third of genes uh, have embryo defects uh, and they reach the human disease genes. Uh, and uh, we created, uh, IMPC created, hundreds of novel mouse models of human diseases uh, based on phenotype match with clinical features. Of course, uh, a lot of publications arise in metabolism and you say it, hearing and more are coming. Every, almost every month there is a paper relating uh, to uh, that correlates genes and human diseases uh, in, in different kind of uh, um, uh, organs and uh, tissues. Expanding missions uh, is for the next 10 years, uh, the MPC strategy. Of course, uh, all this strategy um, is the, 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 the major achievement is to complete a new mouse mutant research of coding genome, but it's very important to continue to push the state of art in genomic engineering to create mouse models with human diseases uh, variants. And uh, design and general mouse strains uh, are, uh, is not uh, the last uh, and it's quite prominent in this kind of uh, scenario. This is the uh, scheme of the mouse clinic. As you can see, there is a core with the SPF breeding core and the periphery, in the periphery there are um, laboratories where the different apparatus uh, has been cleaned in novel mouse strains. We start with the embryo fertility, then there are behavioral studies, vision, uh, um, metabolic uh, functions, lung functions, cardiovascular and imaging and ex vivo, um, ex vivo pathology, of course, uh, and ex vivo collections and gross pathology uh, complete the, the, the primary and the specialized screenings at the MPC level. Uh, the clinic is, uh, is equipped with the um, IVC um, uh, um, systems that they are intraventilating KNG systems uh, that ensure the quality of the animals and the uh, environment that has been could be realized in this in this field and this area, and of course the mouse clinic will be open soon. Um, let me say something about this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, we are going to, we run a project that is called digitalization. And digitalization is probably is the future in this field. And the DVC technology that is, uh, stands for the digital ventilating cage system is simply extraordinary and is, uh, it, 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 authorized, it authorized us to um, uh, monitor uh, animals 24 hours per, uh, in seven days uh, span. And of course the, per the perturbation in movements and animals' death and uh, births uh, could be easily measured by using the system. The data uh, make our studies more reliable, more robust uh, and reproducible uh, all around the world. 
The DVC is an electronic software-based system for AVC cages, improve the quality of research, and optimize the easy and facility management. Of course, it could be applied to different kinds of cages and uh, uh, apparatus that we, we have in our facilities. The DVC is uh, only uh, is very simple because uh, it's integrated in the cage, around the cage, and <coughs> electronic are mounted around the cage that is fully uh, washable and capable, sterilizable, of course. And uh, is, uh, is represented by um, um, uh, some uh, sensors that detect the movement of the animals inside and some uh, UV light that detect all the parameters that could be released. As you can see, it's very easy in this paper that is going to be submitted soon. It's possible to reveal the movements and the lack of animals in the cage day by day. This is just uh, one example, removing one out of five uh, of, uh, in the cage animal, number of animals every day and uh, come back to the right number uh, after, after this, this uh, um, uh, pattern. E the second example is the movements uh, that has been realized. As you can see, the red is the when animals move a lot. E if you compare wild types to the a uh, group of animals where there are two animals, two mutants for the superossi dismutase that represent one of the uh, genes involved in the lateral, uh, lateral sclerosis, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So you can see the movements uh, is quite different and uh, revealed by using this uh, simple system. We discover an amazing uh, pattern of stuff. For example, all the strains are different in the movements. Um, some other findings arise uh, by studying uh, the, the movements and the pattern of mice uh, ju by just by using the DVC system. And uh, so, gene editing, we have talked about a lot this morning. Just uh, I mounted uh, one movie to complete the pattern. The CRISPR Cas9 system is a tool for cutting DNA at a specifically targeted location. The technique has already revolutionised gene editing, but scientists are always looking for new possibilities. So what else can CRISPR do? Since being discovered in a bacterial immune system, CRISPR-Cas9 has been adapted into a powerful tool for genomic research. There are two components to the system, a DNA cutting protein called Cas9, and an RNA molecule known as the guide RNA. Bound together, they form a complex that can identify and cut specific sections of DNA. First, Cas9 has to locate and bind to a common sequence in the genome called a PAM. Once the PAM is bound, the guide RNA unwinds part of the double helix. The RNA strand is designed to match and bind a particular sequence in the DNA. Once it's found the correct sequence, Cas9 can cut the DNA. Its two nuclease domains each make a nick, leading to a double-strand break. Although the cell will try to repair this break, the fixing process is error-prone and often inadvertently introduces mutations that disable the gene. This makes CRISPR a great tool for knocking out specific genes. But making double-strand breaks isn't all CRISPR can do. Some researchers are deactivating one or both of Cas9's cutting domains and fusing new enzymes onto the protein. Cas9 can then be used to transport those enzymes to a specific DNA sequence. In one example, Cas9 is fused to an enzyme, a deaminase, which mutates specific DNA bases, eventually replacing cytidine with thymidine. This kind of precise gene editing means you could turn a disease-causing mutation into a healthy version of the gene, or introduce a stop codon at a specific place. But it's not all about gene editing. Several labs have been working on ways to use CRISPR to promote gene transcription. They do this by deactivating Cas9 completely, so it can no longer cut DNA. Instead, transcriptional activators are added to the Cas9 by either fusing them directly or via a string of peptides. 
Alternatively, the activators can be recruited to the guide RNA instead. These activators recruit the cell's transcription machinery, bringing RNA polymerase and other factors to the target and increasing transcription of that gene. The same principle applies to gene silencing. A crab domain fused to the Cas9 inactivates transcription by recruiting more factors that physically block the gene. A more outside-the-box idea for using CRISPR is to attach fluorescent proteins to the complex so you can see where particular DNA sequences are found in the cell. This could be useful for things like visualising the 3D architecture of the genome, or to paint an entire chromosome and follow its position in the nucleus. CRISPR has already changed the face of research, but these new ideas show that what's been achieved so far could just be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to CRISPR's potential. Whatever comes next, it seems the CRISPR revolution is far from over. Okay, yeah, we can skip these slides since we have been talking about uh, a lot this morning. And just to genetic we are talking about, let's talk about animals. So in, uh, in practice, uh, genome editing uh, is a technique that allows uh, us to uh, introduce new genes and we call it uh, knock-in methods remove, that is calling uh, uh, knockout, or altering the DNA sequences within the genome in a specific position. Take, takes into account that the, the, the majority, uh, not the majority, but the part of the genome alterations of the models uh, resembling exactly the genome of patients that has been cloned and where the gene is modified in certain part. And uh, we can build up uh, uh, as many variants as we, as we can find uh, in the human uh, uh, patient's uh, 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 scenario. And uh, what is going on uh, is to adapt uh, the mouse field uh, to this kind of stuff. Um, these enzymes uh, and nucleases uh, that as, as part of the process uh, can be constructed to cut the DNA sequences, uh, sequences uh, established by the experimenter, uh, by the scientist. And it's important to notice that the libraries of tens of thousands of RNA guides are available uh, for, for this kind of uh, modifications. Of course, it's possible to apply this to the gene therapy, but of course to target genome editing and to cells. Um, my cells can be even made fluorescent by engineering vectors to express uh, particular markers as, uh, like the GFP expression models. There are um, different uh, applications, not only the gene modifications in uh, mouse models uh, for studying the diseases, uh, and uh, um, the gene editing uh, is quite worrying in this, uh, in this, uh, in this era, since uh, uh, this is the announcement that has been made at CNN, uh, CNN Journal, 90, uh, 89 uh, uh, correction could be of genetic defects could be made easily, uh, as announced to this uh, journal. This is a uh, quite uh, true in terms of uh, considering uh, uh, the modeling of mouse strains. For example, there is a new category that is called avatar mice. Avatar mice or, or, or mouse avatars uh, refers to experimental model uh, that are used uh, to identify the best chemotherapeutic uh, uh, choice for a particular cancer patient. There are companies that provide this service in the United States and the UK uh, and provides uh, to uh, different patients that uh, would like to use this service uh, to adapt, to co build up uh, an avatar mice according to the cancer disease that affect this patient. Um, it's extraordinary because uh, even, uh, there, are, there are even models uh, uh, that, uh, like mouse avatars that uh, can be uh, furnished uh, with the uh, human immunocells uh, and uh, the immune systems that could be completely cloned in the mouse strains. Uh, of course, uh, this is very promising insight into immunotherapies. 
Um, avatar master recapitulating in the mutation genomes can be available uh, in different fields uh, and uh, helps a lot uh, help a lot uh, on prognosis therapy and diagnosis for uh, patients that uh, underwent, undergo to this uh, terrific di disease in vivo ex vivo opportunities for gene, gene therapy uh, are, are important in vivo ex vivo treatments are available according to this slide e there are even some, uh, um, some different applications of gene editing. For example, this is an announcement of the creation of a bull without horns, just by editing. Naturally, it's not uh, very easy, and there are a lot of uh, important problems or random DNA integration, but it's possible to generate uh, um, bull, the same, the same uh, strain, without horns uh, easily or maybe another application is the retraces the genome by genome editing the evolution of toxin resistance in monarch butterfly you know the monarch butterfly it's uh, only plants uh, that uh, generate the poisons in order to uh, don't let be hit by predators and there are mutations on the genome uh, that uh, allow the um, this butterfly to resist to the poisons it is very extraordinary in fact uh, i would like to give you uh, ju just a brief introduction to a ridge that is association for Res responsible research and innovation of genome editing is quite active in communication information and uh, if you have the time uh, please go to the website in order to see the initiatives uh, uh, meetings that has been held recently in paris so uh, three arts and applications and welfare and ethics uh, are quite important in our field and we try to be in the forefront of in, the, in this fact and um, in order to, above, above all to, to reduce the number of animals to use and the sufferances and uh, this is my last slide uh, that uh, recapitulate the important things that the frontier and the consortia are um, providing for the community uh, so let me thank you so much uh, for your hearing me <laughs>